39 teams to go on my road to predict all 131 teams this college football offseason. We are moving on to the Georgia State Panthers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. This is one of my more favorite teams in the Sun Belt Conference. I always like watching this Georgia State team. And over the past couple of years, it seems like this Georgia State team is maybe one or two wins or one or two pieces or one or two of something away from taking that next step in the Sun Belt Conference. This is always a team that has hung around near the middle or towards the top of this conference, but they want to look to take that next step. They want to look to get better. Um, and this is the Georgia State team that I very well believe has the talent to be able to do so. It is just a question of whether or not this Georgia State team can start getting results in 2022. So can they push for a Sun Belt title this upcoming year? Or will they continue uh, to struggle to take that next step? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 131 teams this college football offseason, which means I still have yet to do, or chances are I've already done your favorite team. So if you are, if you uh, do want to go there, hey, hit the subscribe button, go through my channel, look at your favorite team, and hey, ring the bell in case I haven't uploaded your favorite team yet, or you want to hear videos about me throughout the season. And for fans of the Georgia State Panthers, you guys will know this team a lot better than I do. So if you feel like I missed something and you want to add something, leave that in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to hear with what you guys have to say. The Panthers of Georgia State in 2022 are my fourth-ranked team in the Sun Belt Conference coming in to this next season. Um, and this is a Georgia State team that I do really like. Again, last year they were 8-5, and 6-2 and two in conference play. As a reminder of what they did last year statistically, 387 yards per game with around 28 points per game offensively. Defensively, 405 yards allowed with 20 27 28 uh, points allowed 27.7 to be exact there are areas where this georgia state team has to get better agreed and i think that's no mystery to any fan who has watched this georgia state team there are there areas where they need to get better um but uh one of those being their passing offense they need to get that going uh, uh the, otherwise their defense is fairly solid just maybe needs to cut back and work on a few uh, of the basic things but this is the Georgia State team that I like and in order to understand why I like them we got to understand what they're losing from a season ago so uh, Cornelius Brown a quarterback is gone had 384 yards no touchdowns four interceptions a, a season ago uh, what was the guy there at Georgia State for uh, I believe a year or two ended up being replaced last season um, and now is gone from the program uh, running back Destin Coates, Destin uh, Cotes. Again, I apologize for any mispronunciations. Mispronunciations. Can't even pronounce that word right in the video. So uh, 186 yards and a touchdown for uh, Destin last year. You'll lose that production. Sam Pinckney and Cornelius McCoy got off the wide receiver position. Pinckney, 311 yards and a touchdown last year. McCoy, 110 yards. Sadly, no touchdowns for him last year for him last year your biggest pass catching threat though that is gone is roger carter 323 yards with two touchdowns was the second leading receiver on this team a season ago uh when you look at the defensive side dante wilson hardrick willis a couple names that are leaving there dante wilson had three sacks 37 tackles and uh hardrick willis or uh not wilson willis it says willis i read wilson my apologies uh hardrick willis um 19 tackles from a season ago uh so you lose that production linebacker uh Ja'Shawn taylor had 32 tackles and two sacks you lose that production as well as a guy like kyle wright that i believe only had around 10 or so tackles a season ago when you look at the defensive backside chris moore and chris bacon a couple names that are leaving there so a couple chris's gone out of the defensive backfield chris moore was the fourth leading tackler on the team had 70 of them a season ago so you are losing talent and there you are losing some some guys that um you got a little sneak peek of the schedule there. Uh, but uh, again, you are losing some guys that I do like, but there are a lot of guys here that I like maybe even a little bit more. Uh, Darren Granger figures to possibly be that starting quarterback for this team. However, or, 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 let me lead, let me read Darren Granger's stats. He had 1,715 yards, 19 touchdowns, and four interceptions. However, you are getting a transfer over from UConn and Steven Krajewski, who also could push for that starting role and maybe there's a little bit of a two-quarterback system. So uh, Darren Granger, again, only 1,700 yards last year. This passing attack was not great. If it still is not great, I could see a scenario where Krajewski gets slotted in there, although I do uh, wholeheartedly, believe, wholeheartedly believe that Darren Granger will be that starting quarterback. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, will be that starting quarterback 
uh, in their week one matchup. Uh, when you take a look at other talent around them, Tucker Gregg, the leading rusher, comes back at 953 yards and nine touchdowns. Uh, uh, Jamius Williams also comes back 859 yards and nine touchdowns for him as well. And Darren Granger was the third leading rusher on this team, 646 yards and three touchdowns for him. So all three guys that had over 500 yards rushing a season ago come back. That's pretty good. Wide receiver uh, Jamari Thrash, uh, Josias Credle. Uh, you have them coming back, as well as Terrence Dixon. Probably figured to be your one, two, three at the wide receiver position coming in the next year. Jamari Thrash was the leading receiver, 435 yards, three touchdowns for him a season ago. Uh, you also returned tight end Aubrey Payne, who had seven touchdowns last year, and that was more than double than anyone else on the team. So 251 yards, seven receiving touchdowns a season ago. Figures to be another key part of this passing offense. Defensively, Thomas Gorge, Avon Dennis, Trey Moore, a couple of names that are going to highlight that defensive line. The linebacking group, uh, Jordan uh, Veneziali, again, probably said that wrong, I apologize, uh, and Blake Carroll at the linebacker position. Those were your two leading tacklers a season ago. Uh, Jordan, four sacks. Blake, five and a half sacks. Pretty good stuff there. In the defensive back position, one of the better defensive backs in the Sun Belt, in my opinion, and Antavius Lane, six passes defended, five interceptions, including a pick six a season ago. Uh, uh, Brykees Brown also as well. 10 passes defended in two picks a season ago for him. And then Quavian White is going to be there as well. He had six passes defended a season ago. There's a lot of talent on this Georgia State team, and they have a lot of things coming back. One thing they got to work on this year, and I think it's no mystery, get that pass game going. Get that pass game very uh, effective, especially if you can couple that with how effective your run game was uh, last year. Uh, th th this was a team that I believe uh, averaged over, yeah, they averaged 225 yards on the ground per game a season ago. If you can keep that number around 200, improve your passing game, this uh, this offense is going to be just fine. And the defense, I think it's going to be really good regardless. So looking at the schedule here, man, they start off with two really tough games and it's the Carolina teams. You got to go on the road to play South Carolina and then you come back home and you get North Carolina. Two, two teams there um, that figure to be right around the middle of their respective conferences. Uh, North Carolina had a couple of disappointing years. They look to turn that around. They return their two leading receivers. And South Carolina, man, they did work in the transfer portal. And that South Carolina team is going to be scary. So those are two interesting matchups. Other games in non-conference, you have a home game against Charlotte. Could be an interesting one there. Charlotte is a team hovering right around bowl eligibility. And a road game against Army that Woo, man, that's going to be a fun game to watch there. Otherwise, when you look at conference slate, you have a home game against Coastal Carolina, home game against Georgia Southern, other home games against Old Dominion and University of Louisiana Monroe, road games against App State, Southern Miss, James Madison, and Marshall. So diving on in to this Georgia State schedule. Um, wow, uh, this is Georgia State team, I, I think is the only team in the Sun Belt to play all four of the newcomers. That's Old Dominion, Southern Miss, James Madison, and Marshall. Now, could be wrong on that, but um, and they have them all in the back half of the schedule. But again, for Georgia State, it starts off with those two really tough out-of-conference games. But this is the Georgia State team that has given Power 5 teams fits in the past, right? Uh, I believe they, they've done it to Auburn. I believe they've done it to Penn State. Uh, I know for a fact Auburn, but they've done it to some other teams there as well, where Georgia State has either come in uh, to their building or they've come into theirs, and Georgia State has given a Power 5 team a real fight. And usually pretty solid Power 5 teams at that, which both of these teams projected to be. So, and if you're going to look for them to pull off an upset against a Power 5 team this year, I'd more likely look to that North Carolina game because South Carolina on the road, that could be a little bit uh, trickier than getting North Carolina in your own building. But those are going to be two fascinating games to watch. And although Georgia State may come out of their 0-2, I think we're going to learn a lot about this Panther team throughout the first two games. Um, but Sunbelt play does not necessarily get easier for them. Uh, Charlotte, again, non-conference should be interesting. But then you got to go play at home against Coastal Carolina. It's a Coastal Carolina team that loses a lot, but still figures to be one of the better teams in the Sun Belt, as long as Grayson McCall is that quarterback, and as long as Jamie Chadwell is that head coach, this Coastal Carolina team's going to be in good hands. On the road against Army, that's going to be a tough game. That's going to be a very, very fun game to watch there, in my opinion. Uh, on the road to App State, that's going to be a tricky one there. Even a game like on the road at Marshall, that could be a fairly tricky game there as well. On the road at James Madison, could be an interesting one there as well. 
Uh, but otherwise, a road game against Southern Miss, you throw that one in there. You have a home game against Old Dominion, who was a bowl team last year. ULM looks like it's starting to improve. If they can keep on the right track, that could be a fairly in interesting game. Georgia Southern brings in Clay Helton as the head coach. A lot of interesting storylines with the Sun Belt Conference this year. Um, but Georgia State has uh, a lot of games. But when you look, a, a lot of the tougher games on this Georgia State schedule are in the front half. Now, I don't do game-by-game -game predictions. I do a more percentage-based Alex tell me predicted team's record. So if the game's in red, I just don't see a win in the game. If the game is in orange, I still don't see you winning. But it is college football and upsets can happen. Yellow, your 50-50 high upset potential games. Games in yellow, green are games that you should win. But you got to watch out for the team on the other side of the ball. And games in green, I have you winning. No games in the dark green, so let's move on to the yellow green. James Madison on the road. I feel like James Madison's going to be a solid team in the Sun Belt Conference, but I do think the Dukes are going to have their struggles against some of the better teams in the Sun Belt. At home against ULM, look, it's a team that won four games last year. I don't know how. Um, no discredit to ULM by any means, but uh, this is a Warhawks team that does lose talent from a season ago, and Georgia State gets them at home. They're one of the better teams in the Sun Belt. Don't see them dropping that one, and I don't see them dropping games to Old Dominion, Georgia Southern, or Charlotte there either. Old Dominion, I think, is going to have their struggles in this new conference. Georgia Southern is starting that rebuild process. I don't know that it all clicks in year one under Clay Helton. And Charlotte, well, that is a solid team, and that could prove to be a very entertaining and fun game. I just don't see Charlotte walking away uh, with a win out of Georgia State's own building. Now, games that are interesting. Probably the least interesting one that's highlighted in orange or yellow is that road game against Southern Miss. And I do like Georgia State's chances to go in there and pull off that win. Southern Miss was a very unhealthy team last year. Now, again, I don't predict injuries, but if Southern Miss can't stay healthy, they're going to have their struggles in this new conference. On the road at Marshall, I feel like they're going to struggle in the Sun Belt here too as well. I feel like a lot of the newcomers from Conference USA just needing a year to adjust to a tougher conference slate, right? Old Dominion, Southern Miss, and Marshall being those teams. Uh, but going on the road to play Marshall is never an easy thing. So Georgia State absolutely could lose that game right there. On the road to App State, we know how good App State is year in and year out. That's always going to be a tough game to play uh, at home against Coastal Carolina. Again, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, Coastal Carolina is still going to be a very good team, even though they may have a lot of defensive questions. On the road against Army, I see that being a very entertaining game as well. On the road against South Carolina... Don't, necess don't necessarily see them pulling out that win, and I don't necessarily see them beating North Carolina either. Although, here's what I will say. I have this Georgia State team going 8-4 and four in 2022. I think this is going to be a really good year for the Panthers. That ceiling is 9-3. and three. Now, when I look at this Georgia State team, they're going to have to pull off an upset in non-conference play somewhere because something tells me they're going to not end up being the favorites against Army, okay? They're not going to end up being the favorites against uh, South or North Carolina. They might only be favorites in non-con against Charlotte. If it, I, I'm predicting that they pull off an upset against either North Carolina or against Army. More than likely, I think it'll be Army, but I could see them beating North Carolina too, uh, which also, when you look in conference play, uh, going 6-2 and two again in conference play, very manageable. Yes, you have some of the tougher games here on the schedule, uh, but once you get through those tougher games, and I think if you can get through the front seven games of your schedule with a 5-2 and two record, this could prove to be a very dangerous Georgia State team if they want to push for a Sun Belt title. But that's going to do it for my thoughts on the Panthers. Let me know what you guys think about this team in the comment section below. I got them at 8-4. Again, let me know your records. Please like, comment, subscribe. It helps support the channel. And remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.